Desmond Ritter, what uh, what does excite you? You said we're excited about him. Can you put yeah, a few a meat on that bones for me? Yeah, coach? I think that he's a guy that you know he won a lot of games in, in college and then helped uh, when Luke Fickle was at Cincinnati. He really changed you know the whole whole culture of that program. Uh, and I, I certainly think that experience when you start that many games coming in helps. We certainly saw it early on as we threw everything we could at him, and uh, he was impressive. And we felt he was ready. Uh, to take over in that time of the season, and, and I thought he did a nice job. He's cool and collected under pressure. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, you've got to be able to, to operate on, on critical downs, third down, fourth down, two-minute situation. And I thought he'd done that pretty well. And certainly there's a lot of things we'll uh, all continue to improve, but we got a lot of faith in him. And so what did he, do you think, glean uh, from his time starting towards the end of last season? What do you think is – is valuable that you've seen on film or you've seen him just grow from from your position uh, as head coach um, and that that you think translates to this year upcoming? Well, there's a lot of things. There's not the unknown. He's, he's been through the season. He understands what it takes to prepare. I mean, that's usually, you know, what gets guys. It's the it's a day after day. You know, it's week one, week two, and that you know, the early part of the season that, excitement you know may wear off and it's like a lot of industries like guys that are consistent and understand what it really takes not just physically mentally that approach and, he, and he's very mature and the way he prepares i think that helps certainly going into this year now he you know he got to finish the season as a starter going into the off season prepare understanding the calendar what's asked of him um like i said he the way he operated was very impressive for for a rookie and now we're expecting him to take the next step well, one of the many reasons why I'm asking that is, you know, obviously uh, when when the narrative that I'm sure you, you hear talked about for your team wanting, um, you know, to start Desmond Ritter this year and somebody of Lamar Jackson's caliber has uh, a, a, a quasi-open market, right? I mean, there's an offer sheet that he can be signed to that uh, many folks wondering, why don't you uh, in Atlanta just pivot to him, but clearly there's a lot that you've already invested in Desmond Ritter with time played and reps going in. So was there ever at any point in time a conversation, consideration of saying, maybe we, we, we just check out Lamar, kick a tire on what he wants for an offer sheet? Rich, you know, the belief come, becomes so much more transactional. I mean, I mean, you look around, I mean, look at the people who are willing to make trades and they happen quick now. And I think anytime any player, it's our job to understand the markets that are going on, who's available, who's not, do they fit? And it's not something, it's not just, there's a lot of things that go, go into it. Um, with those transactions, you know, where you're willing to spend in the salary cap, and, it, and they're great debates. Uh, certainly makes your shows more interesting, and that's great for the league. But at the end of the day, you know, you got to do what you think is best for your team and what the way you're building and, and how it fits into that puzzle. And like I said, there's a lot of great players. They've become available, seems now, more than ever. I mean, look at the deals that were done a year ago, and then you've got a quarterback that's on a huge deal a year ago that's available now. I mean, that was unheard of 20 years ago. Um, not to date you, Rich. I mean, I mean, what was your first year covering the league? It was about 50 years ago? Uh, it's 20. It's coming up on 20. 20. Oh, yeah. Wow. Sorry no. to age you that much. No, no, no. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I would have done NFL Total Access about Joe Namath's uh, championship yeah. year, but I was too busy soiling my diaper at the time, Coach. You know, I was yeah, too busy. I, I didn't know if you covered John United either. Nope. So, I don't go that far sorry. back. I, pre- I apologize, Rich. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I think I'm a fine wine. But you, you, I think you understand the, the question, and you, you must have. No, you understand it. But, but that's our job is to understand everything that's going on around the league. I mean, you, you, it's a. Your, your depth chart's never fully set in stone. I mean, things happen when you have injuries during the season. You see trades happen then. I mean, you see we've had success finding guys at the waiver wire. I mean, it's every day you've got to – it's always a work in progress. And so you're aware of everything that's going on. Uh, you know, we don't have our heads buried in the sand, but ultimately we got to make the decision that's best for our team right now. And what we've done in free agency and our, as we prepare for the draft, we feel really good about where we're at, what we've built. Uh, it's been the first year we've been able to spend in free agency and really excited about those guys we've we've signed so far. And we'll continue to to look to improve any way we can. Yeah, and so That's the truth. so so basically you 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 looked at the landscape and I imagine, you know, um you didn't know if Lamar could be signed to an offer sheet or nobody did, not you specifically, un, until um, you know, uh, uh 
or early March, and I imagine you'd already gone down the road with free agents and things of that nature. So I guess the question is, is was it at all discussed? Obviously, you did land on Ritter, and he is your guy, and he, you plan him to be the guy, and you hope he's the guy that, you know, you hand the Lombardi Trophy to one day. But was, was that ever, um, was Lamar ever, you know, put in, in forth in a, in a meeting by you guys uh, in Atlanta? Rich, I mean, every every thing that becomes available around the league, you know, if it can improve your roster, we discuss. Mm-hmm. And that's at every position, whether that's the the fifth corner, you know, the backup corner on punt. We're always going to look to add, and that's at every position. So those discussions happen all day. Those are standard operating procedures, and I imagine most teams do the same thing. And I understand some players get more attention than the others, but absolutely, we do. You got to know what's going on. You get see the trends and see what's available. So those those are everyday conversations. And you know, uh, it's like kind of like you know asking you, are you ever going to go on the bus? You know, I, yeah. I thought you had Taylor. You know, <laughs> wow. Well, I mean, <laughs> the, the if you don't, but I've yet to see you go on the bus, Coach. If if you don't mind me comparing myself to Lamar Jackson, there's a principle. Um, of of the matter, and I told Taylor years ago. Um, you know, I told Taylor years ago, and Will, uh, who, if I'm not mistaken, you've tire kicked yourself. Um, you know that that um, if there's no motor on the bus, I can't go on it. So at this point in time, I have to stand on principle. But I'm sure you understand that as well. I do. I understand that. Okay. At least you're a man of principle. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Catch the Rich Eisen show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free. 